Hello again, and welcome to another video. Um, I've got quite a few videos planned, uh, lined up. Um, this is going to be, as you can see, favourite albums of the 70s in my collection, sort of continuing this series. Um, and I'm also going to have an album review for Big Thief's new album, which is hopefully going to arrive today on vinyl, which I'm excited for. I'm also seeing them in concert on Sunday, which I'm going to do a review of. And I have a big, well, two big Depeche Mode videos coming up, which with a with a guest, so that'll be nice to uh, to do. So that's what we got lined up. But today we're talking about the '70s, and I know this is sort of like a specialist era within the vinyl community, um, and I think rightly so. It's probably my favourite decade for music. It's right there with the '90s, uh, battling it out. But this is definitely the decade that I own the most albums from, and therefore it was the hardest list to compile but even then there are some albums for me that are just unbeatable so at number 10 a uh, very topical right now topical man right now um neil young after the gold rush uh really cool gatefold here um it took me quite a while to get into neil young actually um I, especially this album i think his voice at first was a bit wow that's <laughs> different um sort of uh, the nasaliness of it. Um, but, I mean, this first side, Tell Me Why, After the Gold Rush, Only Love Can Break Your Heart, Southern Man, Till the Morning Comes. There's not a wasted second there. It's quite a short album. Every song is great. And the fact that it's only at number 10, and it's my favourite Neil Young album by, by, by a landslide, uh, shows how tough the competition is for the decade. Um, number nine is one that I've been... It was more of an instant love for me. Um, so sort of, when I was really getting into music, The Beatles was my first port of call. This album was pretty much second. David Bowie, Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and The Spiders from Mars. If you don't know, David Bowie is my favourite artist of all time. So he will show up again on this list. Um, and possibly later in later decades as well. I think his whole body of work is great. I think he has a couple meh, albums, but for the most part, you're going to get a good album. Um, yeah, this album, I mean, not much to say about it. Everybody knows Starman, Moon Age Daydream, Ziggy Stardust. But I think my favourite tracks are the bookend tracks, Five Years and Rock and Roll Suicide. Just incredible stuff. Uh, 10 out of 10 album, but only at number nine. So, yeah. And we're not stopping with the heavyweights anytime soon. Another album that was really big in my musical awakening, I suppose. Rumours, Fleetwood Mac. Um, really iconic album cover. I think the back cover's pretty cool too. Um, again, it's just the track list, it plays like a greatest hits album. I know that's something that a lot of people say. But um, yeah, because I know songs like Go Your Own Way in the Chain and Dreams so well, I sort of gravitate more towards the album cuts these days, like Gold Dust Woman, Never Going Back Again, Second Hand News. There's some, yeah, every song is just great. Um, and again, the fact that this only makes it number eight is indicative of how good the decade is. And we're going to take a bit of a swerve now out of rock music and out of music that I've been into my whole life, basically. Um, I've got some soul. I did refer in the last video when I was talking about Otis Blue that it's my second favourite soul album of all time. This is number one. Uh, Curtis by Curtis Mayfield unbelievable vocals on this album again every track is fantastic but especially uh, the makings of you possibly my favorite love song of all time so. um number six going into some singer songwriter um jody mitchell blue also kind of topical um in her standing with neil young um I think this album is completely deserves its reputation. I think it's easily the best. Um, a Case of You, another contender for one of my favourite songs ever. Um, I just think it's fantastic, front to back, um, really melancholic. And I'm glad I have the vinyl so I can still listen to it, even though I think most of the tracks are still on Spotify because they're all on her greatest hits. <laughs> um, number five, which is something you have spotted in my last video, Born to Run, 
Bruce Springsteen. The fact this is only number five is just unbelievable to me. This this could easily be number one. Thunder Road, Tenth Avenue Freeze Out, Born to Run, Jungle Land, Back Streets, Me Across the River. God, probably the best produced album of all time for my money. Um, Night and She's the One, they're great, but they're not ones I revisit, and that's probably what's dropped down the ranks a little bit, but still, like, Bruce is the man. Number four, a um, bit of a lesser known one, I would say, uh, Marky Moon by Television. Sort of like a, I don't know, it, it, it always gets given the punk label, but I don't really see the the punk in it. I, I'd call it more of an art rock album. Um, the title track is 10 minutes long. It's fantastic. It's one of the best pieces of music you will hear. See No Evil is incredible. Uh, Guiding Light, Prove It, Venus. I could just list every track. Really, really good album. Um, one of my all-time favourites. And my second favourite album of that year, 1977, behind David Bowie, Low. Second entry on the list. Um, probably the least accessible album, I would say, on this list. Um, I mean, the first half is very accessible. Songs like Sound and Vision and, and Be My Wife and Breaking Glass, some of the most amazing pop music that Bowie ever wrote. But it's the second half that is sort of infamous with this album. Um, the sort of ambient Brian Eno stuff. Um, not everybody's cup of tea, I get it, but I think it's really cool. I like how it's split into two sides. I like that concept. And yeah, there's nothing really to complain about with this album for me. I think it's brilliant. My number two, which again, this is a... Maybe it's a top five album of all time for me, depending on the day. Simon and Garfunkel, Bridge Over Troubled Water. Um... I think I was saying about Ziggy Stardust and how that was really formative in my love of music. This album as well. Um, I remember the first time I heard Keep the Customer Satisfied, I was completely blown away. That's still a top 10 song of all time for me. I think it's so underrated and amazing and just joyous. The lyrics on this album are awesome. On the title track, on Cecilia, The Boxer, Only Living Boy in New York. It's just one of the most stacked track lists you're ever going to find. And it's probably my favourite singer-songwriter album of all time. It's top two. Um, and it's just, it's unbelievable. That leaves us with number one. Again, a top five album of all time for me. And we're sticking with David Bowie. Three entries on the list. Station to Station is my number one. Six tracks. Every second of it is perfection it's joyous it's fantastic you got the title track which is this long almost like prog rock opener um golden years which is this amazing funk track which was a big hit word on a wing is really cool it's more like a soul vibe tv c15 is like a great rocker stay has an amazing hook and then wild is the wind the nina simone cover is so beautiful it's one of his best vocal performances you're going to find so Hopefully, yeah, I mean, there were so many that I, I missed out. Obviously, no Pink Floyd, no Led Zeppelin, Wish You Were Here, and Houses of the Holy, especially, were very close. I can see them down there. <laughs> um, but the the decade is just so stacked that I could have easily made a top 20. Um, but yeah, um, look forward to some more videos on the channel. And uh, we'll do the 80s next in this series, which should be interesting because it's not exactly a decade where I have loads of albums in my collection. So yeah, we'll see. But until then, see ya.